Welcome back to Biosignaling on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a relatively simple biosignaling pathway, and that's the one of receptor guanylyl cyclases. And the classic example of a molecule that activates these is nitric oxide, abbreviated NO. Before we actually go into the pathway for guanylyl cyclases, let's discuss the types of proteins that we have. We have two types. We have one type, here's our first one, that's a membrane or transmembrane guanylyl, guanylyl cyclase. We have extracellular domains here in red that actually bind the particular protein. Um, probably the more important one here is we have atrial natriuretic factor, or peptide ANF, which is actually a hormone released by the atria of the heart that actually decrease blood volume to decrease blood pressure. Um, they would actually bind here on, these, on this extracellular domain. We have a transmembrane domain right here, and then our cytosolic domain, this is actually where we have the catalytic part that actually converts GTP into cyclic GMP. Okay? In fact, if we go back here for a minute, this is actually the reaction of adenylyl cyclase or adenylate cyclase, but the reaction is going to be completely homologous except for the fact that the adenine is going to be replaced with guanine. So we'll start with GTP and get cyclic GMP. Okay, so just thought I would uh, oops, mention that. All right, so that's going to be on the cytoplasmic domain. That's our first kind of receptor guanylyl cyclases. The other kind is completely soluble and does not exist in the membrane. Um, this is going to be the class of receptor guanylyl cyclases that actually is, is um, activated by nitric oxide or NO. And so this type of guanylyl cyclase has a critical heme in it. Remember heme is a is an org, a very large macrocyclic organic cofactor, has an iron uh, chelated in the center. And nitric oxide is actually going to bind to this iron which causes the whole protein to change conformations and that change in conformation activates the guanylyl cyclase activity of this. We're actually going to focus on the soluble version of this because um, nitric oxide has so many important effects um, and it's more common to talk about. So in general I just wanted to mention this that nitric oxide is made by nitric oxide synthase. Okay, um, Some cells particularly of the vascular endothelium in the cardiovascular system, the endothelial cells actually use arginine and convert it via nitric oxide synthase into the citrulline, which isn't really important here, but here's our nitric oxide. And the nitric oxide then is going to act on uh, smooth muscle cells. Okay, Smooth muscle cells control how uh, the diameter of blood vessels. So if they're contracted, then the, the vasculature is constricted, but if they're relaxed, it dilates, which and typically you want a good deal of dilation um, for health. If you have too much constriction, you have uh, hypertension. So what nitric oxide does is, as we mentioned, it crosses the membrane and activates this soluble guanyl guanylyl or guanylate cyclase. Um, we mentioned that nitric oxide synthase can also make the nitric oxide, but in the case of endothelial cells, they can make it and then send it over into the smooth muscle cell. The soluble guanylate cyclase then is going to make uh, cyclic GMP from GTP. Again, I showed you the reaction of adenylate cyclase. It's completely homologous to that. Uh, so we get cyclic GMP. What cyclic GMP does is it activates protein kinase G. Okay, again, the G is just named that way because it's from cyclic GMP. So what protein kinase G does is it activates a series of uh, phosphorylation cascades. Um, in general, we can activate transcription factors, which give us changes in gene expression. We can act. We can uh, activate VASP, which is a protein that will uh, cause platelets to be inhibited, meaning they won't stick together, and so it actually prevents clotting from happening. Or we can actually uh, phosphorylate myosin light chains, and that will lead to relaxation of the smooth muscle, and we sort of get a net uh, dilation of the blood vessel. We prevent excess constriction from, from occurring. Okay, And so that's basically how nitric oxide functions and how the receptor guanylyl cyclase works. Nitric oxide crosses through the membrane, activates guanylate cyclase, and that causes GTP to be converted to cyclic GMP, but cyclic GMP then activates protein kinase G, and we get a series of phosphorylation cascades, which we're not going to go into super detail here. Now, what I'll also mention, 
And I also had a separate video on this where we talked about this with cyclic AMP. But much like that, cyclic GMP is degraded by what's called a phosphodiesterase. The specific one is called cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. What cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase does is it sort of regulates the activity of cyclic GMP because it degrades cyclic GMP into just GMP, which terminates its activity. And so basically what that phosphodiesterase does is it prevents prolonged cyclic GMP. Well, there's actually a drug that actually inhibits the phosphodiesterase. It's called Viagra, originally sold as sildenafil. What Viagra was actually initially made for was actually to cause vascular dilation, which lowered blood pressure. It was actually a heart medication to lower overall blood pressure and reduce hypertension. And so what, it, what, what the Viagra would do is it would inactivate or inhibit phosphodiesterase, or cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, which would keep the concentration of cyclic GMP elevated for a longer period of time, meaning more protein kinase G activity and more smooth muscle relaxation. And so what would happen is people's blood pressure would be lowered and they'd have an overall healthier cardiovascular system. Okay. Now obviously uh, we know what Viagra was used for now. Um, it's used for basically treating erectile dysfunction, and the mechanism behind that's actually the same. It turns out that the vasculature in the penis, which is responsible for maintenance of an erection, is controlled by the same pathway. So if you use Viagra now and you inhibit that cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, then cyclic GMP remains activated longer and its concentration remains elevated, which means more protein kinase G activity, more smooth muscle relaxation, and that causes dilation of the blood vessels in the penis, which allow for increased blood flow, increased blood perfusion, and it helps uh, men ma maintain an erection for a longer period of time, um, which is actually kind of the basis why in the commercials they say if you have an erection lasting longer than more than four hours, go see a doctor immediately and whatnot. But again, it's going to occur by the same mechanism. If you inhibit the phosphodiesterase, you're going to keep cyclic GMP activity elevated for a longer period of time, and you're going to have more smooth muscle relaxation. So receptor guanylyl cyclases also have um, so really important and cool clinical applications. Um, another type of molecule that also inhibits uh, cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase is actually horny goat weed. Um, it's actually a natural uh, supplement that can actually be used um, in place of Viagra, since Viagra is a prescription drug. You can actually buy horny goat weed in a, in a drugstore. All right. So hopefully this made sense and gave you some intuition on the receptor guanylyl cyclases. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.